The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Cosmos. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Megan the Daughter. And today we are playing Emotep. This is from Cosmos. This is a, uh, I guess you would call it a block mover yes. type of game because you're trying to move your blocks uh, onto boats and have those boats sent to certain ports where you can use them to build pyramids or obelisks or use them to trade in the marketplace. Notice how we said blocks, not cubes, because these are huge little wooden blocks. Yeah, they are they pretty good size. They are not your size. standard cubes. And we'll have to show you uh, in our review how they mm -hmm. compare to, say, like uh, the standard Lords of Waterdeep yes. type of cube, so you can see just how big these really are. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering why we said emote up like that, we've said it enough, but as you know, we are big fans of the Mummy movies. Yes, and the Mummy ride at yes. Universal Studios Florida. So definitely that is why we will always say that if you get annoyed. Apologies, but we are big fans of those movies. Yep. So watch our game and hopefully not get too annoyed by us <laughs> making mummy movie references. Yes. Okay, the game board, or game boards that we have here, come with two sides. You have the A side and the B side. We are playing with the A side for this video. Uh, we've played with both sides, and we'll talk more about that in, in our review. Um, but all of these are the A side. So obviously the object of the game is to score points. The like way, any game. Well, most games, yes. The way we score points is by accumulating the points by moving stones of our color to these various boards here. Uh, you'll see that I am using the brown stones. And I'll be using the gray ones. So we have a sled of our color, and you can see our sled can hold five stones of our color. Now, depending on the turn order and where you fall into that to begin the game, that determines the number of stones that you have. Now. Megan usually makes me go first, which is kind of odd, because then I only get two stones. And I get three. So I will put my two stones there. And the way we get our stones from our sled to the various boards is by ship. Now we have here, this is a ship that can hold four stones. Now this ship can sail once it has the required three stones that you see up here at the top. Now there are other sizes. There is a three and it only needs two stones on board in order to sail. You have a uh, ship that holds two stones and it only needs one. And you have a single one that obviously once you have one on there, it's full. Now what determines which ships we use? We have cards. Now the game is played over six rounds, but there's actually seven cards here. And if you look at these cards, it will tell you which size boats to use. Now, it also represents, or has two uh, dots down here, that represents the player count. And there are cards for two, three, and four players. So what we do is we shuffle these seven cards up. And then we take one and we put it in the box. And we will not use that one, so we don't have perfect information as far as the number of ships that come up. So then the, at the start of every turn, we will flip one of these cards over. And I'll just go ahead and flip the first one. And we have a one, a two, a two, and a four. So I'll just place that up here so we know which ships we're gonna use. So now we alternate going back and forth. Now on our turn, we can do basically one of three things. We can either take one of our cubes and place it on any boat that we want. In any spot too. That Good point, They Megan. do not have to be in descending or ascending order. So yeah, so if I'm the first one here and I want to put it right there in the middle of the ship, I can. Because that is very important with your placement. So let's just say I placed it there. So that's the first thing I can do on my turn. Now let's say it gets to my turn and I'm like, huh, well I just want to mess with you a little bit so I can actually control where that ship goes. So let's say I have an inkling of where you might be planning on putting that. And I can mess with you and just be like, you know what? You're going to go here to the temple. Yep. So that's the second 
uh, thing you could possibly do. The third thing that you can do is you can take up to three of your colored stones from the supply. Now, it says that basically whatever player count you have, you take the colors that everybody's using and you put them all in one big thing. We actually kind of Gerberize this, so we have uh, all of our colors in our big uh, butter tupper, uh, tupperware. tupperware thingies. Um, but the last thing you can do is you can take three of your color from the general supply and you can place it on your sled. Now, it's important to note that uh, if you do not have spots, for three, you can never have more than five on your sled. So let's just say that I already had three on my sled. You can only take two. I could only take two. I'm, I can take up to three. There's no reason why you wouldn't if you have the option. Yes. Uh, so let's say to start off, I only have two. I could take three. There is a spot for each one of those on my sled and I am good. Mm -hmm. So once all of the boats have uh, sailed to all the different ports, we uh that ends the round okay and then the only thing that we score at the end of the round is the temple and we'll talk about that at the end of the first round when we score that uh there are other things that happen right away the market we get cards so megan's gonna go ahead and flip over the four cards that we're going to use now depending on the color code on the card will determine when that action takes place. So based on what we have here, let's go ahead and talk about those for a minute. We have this red card, which basically it happens immediately. And you can see, let me get that in focus. It's kind of red, there. urgent, get it done. There we go. It says immediately place one stone from the quarry, which is our supply that's not part of our sled, in the burial chamber. And there's different ones of these, and basically they allow you to do the same thing except different parts. So this one is for the burial chamber, which is right here. Mm -hmm. Next we have the sail. So for one action, you can place one stone on one ship and then sail that ship to the site. So instead of those three actions, you kind of get to hold onto this, and whenever you want to use it, you just play the card, do the action, discard it. Yep. Then we have statue. These are like Congress cards in Thebes. So basically... Nice tie-in there with the, uh, another yeah. ancient Egyptian game. Mm -hmm. So basically you're going to want to collect as many of these as you can because the score will vary based on how many. And you'll definitely want to try to get more than five because then your points will just keep going up. So those are pretty good to get. Then we have temple decorations. So these are kind of similar to um, what you were saying with like the sarcophagus type of cards. Mm -hmm. So these um, are different for each of the different locations. This one is the temple. So at the end of the game, you earn one point for three stones in the temple, your own color, and any other color stones. So you want to make sure maybe the temple is a bit more full than the other ones. So you can get points if you collect that. Right. Now, the uh, order that you basically resolve things on the boat, let's just say that this boat looked like this okay and this boat then was sailed to the market now the order is important so since my blocks are the first here i will take these and return these to the supply but then i get the first two cards that ever i want so let's say i want that statue and i want the sarcophagus then i would get to take those megan would then resolve these two they would go back to supply she would get those okay so that's all there is to the market. The way the pyramids work is for when you come off the boat, you go and there are columns here and there's little arrows above the columns. So when you place the cubes there, you get the points out underneath it. So in this case, say if I was the first on the boat, I would get two points. And Megan was second on the boat, she would get one. Now the pyramid is three dimensional. So once we get to the second level, we have points there. And then finally the third level is only worth one point or one, it's, it can hold one stone, but it's worth four points. Mm -hmm. So you just keep building up. We need a yep. cube there. And like that. So that's what the pyramid would lo look like. Excuse me. The temple, this is the only one that has points that are assessed at the end of every round. Now the way this works is in order, you go and you place off of the boat from left to right and you look from the top down. So in this scenario, say this was the second or third round of the game, we would look and I can see three of Megan's and one of mine. So Megan would score three points and I would only score one. Also want to point out that the last spot there has three and four cubes on there. So that's for three and four players. So with two players, you use less. The burial chamber, much like the pyramids, 
has columns with the little arrows on there. And as you go, you put your cubes until you fill a column and then you move to the next column. The way this scores at the end of the game is however many of your colors are connected, then you get points. So in this case, I have two. I would get three points. Megan has four. She would get 10 points. I have scored a lot in the burial chamber because I have had a lot of connecting cubes. Yeah, what'd you have last time? You had, I think you had like seven or eight. I, yeah. Yeah, it was freaky. It was a lot. <laughs> and then finally we have the obelisk, uh, which this is going to be in a two-player game. There's, uh, this breaks down. There's a two, there's a three, and four players. So in a two-player game, whoever has the highest at the end of the game is going to get the 10 points and the other person's going to get one. Megan usually kicks my butt with the obelisk. Mm -hmm. So that is it. We have our score track here where we will move our cubes around. And that's pretty much it. Megan, yep. have I missed anything? Uh, if we have, we will cover it as we play. Okay, so let's ask the question. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Well, we've already kind of set that up. You're going first. Okay, so let's get ready to play. Okay, so we are ready to play. I think for my very first action, I'm going to just take three cubes. Okay. Put them from my quarry to my sled. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place my cube right there for a spot. Okay. I think I'll take that boat. Okay. And send you right there to the burial chamber. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll place another cube. Okay, um, I'll place mine there with you. All right, let's jump on that one then. I'm gonna take three cubes. And I think I'll go ahead and just fill out that boat. Okay, and I'm gonna move you right here to the temple. Alrighty, um, I think this boat will go to the pyramids. Okay, so you're going to go ahead. So I'll get two points and Megan will get one point. Yep. And I'm going to put one right there. And I'll put one on the boat as well. And there. Now. <clears throat> you have two options. So you'll notice we have four boats and we have five ports. One port will never be used. One port will never be used. That it's is a lonesome correct. port. Um... Do you even want to try to get a card, or do you want to start on obelisks? Well, that would put me at a severe disadvantage in the obelisk, so I think we're going to just go to the cards here. Okay, so I'm first, so I'm going to go ahead and take that statue, because it'd be silly not to. Right. That's my first. Um, let's, let's see, I'll take this one for temple decorations. So I'll okay. do that one. Do you want the sarcophagus yeah, or the I want, sail? Yeah, I want the sarcophagus because that's going to happen immediately. So I'm going to place one stone from the quarry in the burial chamber. So oh, that's going that to go right there. You. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and take the sail because that's the last thing. Okay, now since I was the one who sailed the boat, Megan will actually get first action this turn. Yay. So all those stones that were on this boat get returned back to our quarry. These boats come back. We get rid of any of the, if there had been any other cards there, we would put them discarded. Our ships are one, two, three, and four. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and refill this. Got another statue out there. There we go. So I'm first, then, yeah? Yep. Cool. Let's go there. And since I have no stones, I will go ahead and take three. Might as well. I'll go ahead and take three, too, then. Sometimes I found in a two-player game it's smart to kind of keep your turns even there oh. by doing that. One of the things we forgot already, we yes, forgot we to score the temple, so well, I would get, two, get points. two points for that. That is something we do forget. Yeah, that we usually remember before we get We're too like, far We're like, wait a minute, no. Yeah, let's go ahead and I think I'm going to go there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, go there. Chicka, 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 chicka. Uh, let's see. Do I want that one? You want that, don't you? Let's see. I could immediately put one in the pyramid, which would three be points. worth three points. Where we got there? We got one number two. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. Wow. Because that basically is a free cube from my quarry, and that will give me three points. Okay. Um, let's see. And that cube goes back to my quarry. Well, let's see. I'm going to go take this little boat 
We're going to go to the burial chamber, and that cube will go there to finish off that row, and move there. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and jump on that boat. Okay, um, go ahead and put me behind you. And, let's see. We got a temple, an obelisk, some pyramids. Yeah, I'm going to jump on that boat. I'll go ahead and get on behind you. Hmm. Don't know that I like where this is headed. You have options. I do have options. You have three, to so, be specific. Let's just go ahead. Let's start building our obelisk. I figured that's the safest move, because then we're both at an even advantage. Um, go ahead and put me on there, please. Um, the third spot, yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. And let's see. Let's go ahead and just sail that to the temple. Okay. So we'll go right there. Right I'm on there. Top. Okay. So that's the end of the round. We'll score the temple. So I get two, you get two. Yep. I only so still get two points. One, two. One, two. And that's it. That is it. So all these cards go away. Yep. These boats come back. We'll go ahead and refill this. And our boats for this one. One, three, three, four. One, three. I feel like I'm calling out almost like bingo numbers. Okay. Wow. So There's you I sailed. I sailed to so your I'm still your first. I'm gonna go ahead and take three. Yeah, I'm gonna take three because I don't really have a choice. Yeah. I have to do that. Um I'm gonna go there. I think I will go there. You're going to go to the pyramid. You're going to jump ahead of your ship, though. Two points for you. Okay. You still got points. Uh, yeah. Two points is two points. I'm going to jump on that Put ship. Put me right on behind you. Okay. Oh, let's see. Don't necessarily like the direction <laughs> that this is headed. Because these all favor me at the moment. Yeah. Um, Pick let's your just worst. go to the tempo. Tem tempo. tempo. The temple. Tempo. And bump, bump. Again, you're helping me out, just saying, with the temple decorations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> go on that boat there. Um, let's see. Head and put me there. Okay. I'm going to grab three from my quarry. Okay. I'll just go ahead and put one right there. Okay, um, I'll jump on that ship. Okay, um, we got three, correct? There are three. I will go ahead and sail this. Yeah, I thought you so, might. So, two statues for me. Would you like the quarry for the obelisk or the pyramid? Um. So, you get to place those immediately. Let's go to the pyramid, because the pyramid is worth four points. Okay, so you took pyramid. Yep, so. And I'm just going to discard that one. One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, so you sailed that ship, right? I did sail that ship, so it is your turn. So I will go ahead and place the stone there. And I'll go ahead and take three for my action. Okay. And I think I'm going to go ahead and sail this ship, because it only needs That's two. That's pretty good. So I will place You're those connecting. right there. Yes, I am. Ugh. Okay, so now that's, that's the, ten points right there. Now the end of the round, we resolve the temple. You're hey, gonna get three, three, and I get one. Get somewhere. And that's we it. refill the marketplace. We figure out what boats we need. Our boats will be one, two, two, three. One, two, two, and whoops, get rid of the one. Two, two, need three. That. There we go. Okay. So I sailed. So, you are up. Okay. Let's go there. I'm going to grab three cubes. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and go there. And I think I'll jump on that boat. Let's go to the pyramids, because that is three points for me, two points for me, one for you, so five and one. Right. One, one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay. Um, Let's go ahead. I'm gonna jump on that boat. I'm gonna go ahead and sail you right to the temple. Okay. I will jump on that boat. And I'm gonna sail you to come the burial sail away, chamber. Come sail away. Come sail away with me. Okay, I will lads. go there. Lads was the last part of that song. Huh? Lads? He comes come sail away, lads. I think we're thinking of different songs. No, that's the same song. I know that song. You know that song? I know that song. Your turn. You uh, can grab stones or you can sail that ship. No. You're gonna go right What was that song, here? Guitar Hero, Sail, Sail Your Ship? Um, there was in the first Guitar Hero. You played it a lot. I love that song. Anyway. All right, so. What do you want? Well. Obsolisk? Obsolisk? Ob obsolisk? Um, yep, I can't do words. At the end of the game, I get three pyramid. points for Pyramid, but the Pyramid's kinda... almost built. You can take a statue, or you can take the chisel. And the chisel is place two stones on one ship, or place one stone on two ships. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the pyramid decoration, just because it's getting close to uh, being done there. Okay. So, now we'll score the temple. Uh, looks like it's two and two. Two, two. So, one, two, one, two. And we'll get rid of, we have two, two, three, four. Two, two, three, and four. And I sailed that ship, so you were actually first. Well, I have no stones, so I'm gonna go ahead and. No, that sounds bad. I have no stones, so. That's a good thing, though. But. I'll take three stones. <laughs> three stones, please. I took three stones as well. Hmm. And we have well, this round, and then one more. Let's go ahead and let's jump on that ship. Okay. I'm gonna use my sail card. And I'm going to go ahead and place one stone on a ship and then sail the ship. We're going to go here. And we're still even. Okay. And get rid of that card. I will jump on that ship. And yeah, put me on there with you. Be shipmates. Uh, hmm. Let's go and sail that ship to the uh, burial chamber. Yeah. So I'm going to cut you slide off. Slide those right there. You normally don't take advantage of that. Yeah, you know, I'm trying something different. Um, I will go ahead and go on that ship. I think I'm going to go ahead and take three stones. I will go ahead and take three stones. And then I will jump on the ship right here. It's um, the lollipop. It's a good ship. What? Yeah, the good ship lollipop. I'm a good ship. He's um, talking about. You don't know that song? No. I think it was Shirley Temple. But then there was this, a classic Star Trek The Next Generation episode where Riker was talking about the about the ship and he said, it's the lollipop. It's a good ship. I don't know if I've seen that one. I've seen some next gen. Um, I'll just go right there with you. Wow. Yep. Well, let's sail that ship to the pyramids. So you get three points, and I will get two for starting the second tier. One, two, three, and you get two. One, yep. Two. I'll go ahead and jump on there. Yeah, I think I will jump on there as well. And let's just go ahead and sail it so I don't have to yeah, be controlling. I that looks like those that. statues, because that gives me up to 15 points in statues. Okay, so do I want the sail or the lever? The lever says... Uh, sail one ship to a site. Decide for yourself the order on which the sh stones are loaded. Yeah, I think, I'll, S's. I think I'll take the sail. And that's it. So we so, will score the temple. And Looks like two, it's two. two and two. So yep. one, two. Oh, right one, two. And our last boat. One, two, three, three. One, two. Three, three. Three. Okay. This is the last round. So you sailed that. I did sail that, so it's so on that you. that would be my turn. My turn. I'm gonna take three stones. I'll take three stones. I'm gonna have a full sled. Same. It is Christmas time approaching, so it is nice to have full sleds. Well, you'd hope if you're if you've been good. 
might get new games. You know, might get new games. <laughs> or you might get or, Uno. Or, <laughs> Uno's a good hey, game. Hey, we've though. done a show on Uno. I like Disney Uno. Princess Uno. I know, that was my show. Uh, mm. Let's go ahead and let's jump on that ship there, since it's only a one. Uh, let's just take you to the temple. Uh, that was not where I wanted to go. It was not. No. Oh, I'm sorry. It was not. Oh, hey, I yeah. sailed. I'm taking yeah. like three yeah, I'm, turns. I'm going there. Well, put me on it with you then. Uh, and then you can choose where you're going. Yeah, we're going to the burial chamber. Yeah, well, my block dropped a little bit. Not really. Uh, because that's still continuous. Contiguous. Con yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that's a thing. So, Your turn. that was, yeah, there. I think I'll go ahead and use my sail. Okay. I can place one stone on one ship and sail that, that ship. Where are so we going? We are going to the obelisk. Oh, darn. So, There's me. we're going to tie on the obelisk because I have been killed by you on that. Yeah, because so, my tower has like come crumbling down on you. That's how you die. Come crumbling down the um, walls. First. Yeah. Let's just go second. And you can sail it if you want. Yep, we're sailing. Yeah. I don't want to let you have even a point. Yep. And I'll take the mm -hmm. temple decorations because there's no point in taking those. So these go back to our quarries. And now we resolve the temple. So it looks like I'm getting three. three. I get one. Woo you got that? Got sure. that, and that's it. So what we will do now tally is up. we'll yeah we'll use see what green cards we have and then tally up this and then of course we'll tell you what it is but let's see who gets that all important trophy. Okay, Dad gets the trophy on this one. Because of your dead people in the backyard. That is true. There were dead people in the backyard. Because um, your burial chamber is what gave you that lead. So we let's just go ahead and t go ahead and talk about how we scored here. We already did the pyramid and the temple. The burial chamber. I got 19 points out of that because <laughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and I didn't that have connect. Any that connect. So I get 15 points plus two for every one that is over that. So 19 points. The obelisk, we break even because we each had three. So what you do is you take the total number of points, which would be 11, divided by two, and then uh, round down. So we each got five points there. Um, I had 17 points from my statues. We all had we, we basically are Yeah, we had the temple decoration, so that would have been really good if you would have got that. That would have been like double points. What the hell? But that basically canceled each other out. Yeah. And then I got uh, three. three points for the pyramids, uh, the pyramid decorations. Yep. So... Um, That's that. Had there been a tie uh, in points, the tiebreaker is based on the number of stones that you have in your sled. I have one, Megan has two, so had we tied, Megan would have won the tiebreaker, but I ended up winning by nine points. So that pretty much wraps up this uh, playthrough, so let's get to what we think. Okay, Megan, what do you think? I like this game. Um, like we've said, we've played with both the A and the B side. The A side is a bit more simpler, so I'll obviously start with that. The B side um, is a bit more challenging because I think there's more strategy involved with it. Yeah, let's go ahead and show them the B side. Yeah. Let's just get our cubes out of the way here. Okay, so with the obelisks here, let's see it in focus, you are going on who can build basically three the quickest and then you start getting points so if you have three first here you'll get 10 and then so on and so forth basically you take you move your your blocks here just like normal mm -hmm. but when you uh when you only have two there then they stay there but once you get that third then you move the blocks to here so you do want to get that done as fast as possible because in 10 9 8 that's mm -hmm. the points so that's pretty good then we have the burial chamber which is a bit simpler but you get points for the rows um for most of fear is stone, so the rows will be this. So yeah, so say Megan had three in this row and I had one, Megan would get eight points, I would get four. Yep. And so you, then you assess all three rows. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any in there, obviously, or if you're in last place, you get yeah. zero points. But So that's that one. The temple is a little bit different, so every time you will get a different benefit. So you can either get one point or two stones. 
um, two points, again, 1.2 stones, a card from the top of the market deck, and if you're three, four, another point or two stones. Yeah, I really like this part of the temple because mm -hmm. this, and when we played this uh, a few days ago, we used the B-side, and I think I got a lot of uh, extra stones and that way. And you get points, too. Yeah. Because that always helps. Um, the pyramids are broken down into many pyramids, so they are only um, two-dimensional with five with like two tiers. So again, you'll do that. Here you have different abilities, so if you're here, you'll get one point in a card. Here you get one and three stones, and then one, and you place a stone on a ship. Now the great thing about this is you can decide which pyramid you want to put mm -hmm. your block. You still follow the same rules, so like if there, there was a stone there and I wanted to go to this pyramid, I would place a stone there. But say if I didn't want to go there, I could go here or here. So it is pretty cool because you do have that ability to try to maybe get some more points that way. Yeah. And then the market is pretty similar, although this spot here, you put two cards face down. And it's almost like Russian roulette. So if you decide you want to take that card, um, basically you're taking both of them, looking at one, discarding that other. So kind of you're taking a risk to see what you could get now one of the things we have not done yet is to mix and match those but i do want to try that th that is another option uh, we've played the a side we've played the b side which side do you like the best i mean they're both good i do want to try mixing it because i think it would be cool because i do like the aspect here with the obelisks and the pyramids and the temple I kind of like the A side better for the burial chamber just because you can get more points i feel like that way yeah because you usually abuse the heck out I, of I do and then um I do kind of like the market, but I like having on the A side because you know what you are going to get. So I don't like having the little unpredictability. Yeah. Because I do like to know and then visualize, hey, you could be getting something really good, but I don't know what that is. So, yeah. I like all the artwork. I think it's cool. The theme is really good. I love the cubes. They're, because you know, you always think of those little tiny wooden cubes almost from like Lord's Waterdeep. So this is like, you know, the jumbo cubes, which is pretty cool. I yeah. like them. They're, they're nice. So here is a comparison of the size. We have Emotep on the left, and we have Lords of Waterdeep on the right. So you can see that the cube size for Emotep is uh, quite a bit bigger, almost twice the size of what you get in Lords of Waterdeep and other games like that. I, I think I would have liked to have the scoring track to be a little bit bigger, yeah. just because we have always gone past 40 points. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's really there's no other distinguishing mark. Uh, the back of the, the scoring thing is actually kind of cool. It's the same artwork as the box, which I think the, the artwork on the box is really neat as mm -hmm. well. Um, I love the cubes. I, the boats, I really like. I mean, these, these are, are nice, cool. thick. I like the, the way the mechanics of this game work. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, There's still the screw your neighbor aspect, which I like. Yes, there, there definitely is that because just because you've got your system laid out of how you want your cubes on the boat mm -hmm. or your stones, uh, you don't get to always go where you want. And typically when once Megan figures out where I'm thinking I'm going to go, she will sail that ship to someplace mm -hmm. I don't want to be. Or kind of where I want you not to be, yeah. or where I have in mind. Um, I haven't played this with more than two people. I know you have. So I think yes. it would be interesting the fact that I am all over the screw your neighbor mechanics. So I think that would be very interesting to play with more people because you have more of that um, tension almost. The, well, with the more players, I've found that you can't rely on that too much. You kind of have to try to play your own game because if you're all you're doing is messing with somebody else. You're going to have you're, more points. Right. Because you've got to take the time to get your stones on the ships. Uh, I love this as a two-player game because that aspect does come through. Yes. Uh, you can do that without really suffering too much. And I do do that. You do that. <laughs> uh, I do want to show the other cubes off. We have the other colors are white and black. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, no green. But, no blue. But I realize that, you know, these are... Ancient Egyptian and they probably well, represent the different materials. Yeah, they, these are kind of the standard colors there. Uh, and then here's what those... Sleds. sleds look like they're you know pretty neat mm -hmm. and again um they're double-sided you know very thick so the components are top-notch really like that even the boards themselves yeah they're really cool i, I mean, like these... how they have the notch to put the ship in too. oh yeah that we that's didn't even talk cool about that thing. yeah having that there that's really neat as well um gameplay really like it components like it artwork like it uh, two thumbs up. This is a game that anybody in the family can play. Mm -hmm. It plays fast. It's easy, super easy yes. to teach. I mean, when you only have three things to do on your turn, or possible one of three things to do on your turn, uh, it makes it real, real easy to do it. Even Grandma could play this game. If Grandma felt like it. If yeah, Grandma sure. felt like it, yeah. <laughs> uh, Grandpa would probably kick your butt. Yeah, probably, maybe. <laughs>
But that is Emotep. And you know what? We did not even do a single mummy movie reference. We did good. You we know, restrained ourselves. We we told people in our intro that we would probably, you know, do so many that they would get sick of it. No. And here we were so concerned about uh messing with each other that we totally forgot. We're I don't even know if we had that many references. No. I mean we were just gonna say the name. Emotep. There we go. There's yeah. the token Emotep. He's just not in the game. He you know, he is the builder of Egypt according to the box. But he's not it, relevant he was to the, the architect. Gameplay. And he's and yeah, Emotep in this game is his not a killer mummy. He's nothing to like the in the mummy movie. Uh, he's not Arnold Foslu. Foslu? 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 And if you watched our other other uh, playthrough of the Adventurers, the yes. Temple of Horus, uh, where we had Emotep, he was a mummy. Yes. And he was a little juicy. Yes, he was a little juicy. So uh, if you missed out <laughs> on all the mummy references in this game, go check out our Adventurers game. Uh, I think we had quite a few mm-hmm. references. We had a few. I know we didn't yeah. go overboard on that. So our our uh, viewers are probably happy that we didn't and we kind of restrained ourselves. And if you don't understand the references, the movies are on Netflix. So check them out. The first two at least. The they, third one. They yeah. are excellent movies. But we are heading into the Christmas season. So probably not the time of year that people are going to want to watch The Mummy. Although A Mummy Christmas Crossover. Oh gosh. Wouldn't that be awesome? Would, well, you know? the third Mummy movie has snow. There's your little winter aspect in the Himalayas. Well, we're not going to talk about that one because <laughs> that one didn't have Emotep. Movie. Um, but no, we're getting a little silly. <laughs> so that is Emotep from Cosmos. Uh, we highly recommend it. Yes. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us. That it's got... Oh my goodness. Every night. Wow. They keep getting Man, they are flying down that road. (laughs) Ha <laughs>